Welcome guys to another video and uh, unlike the rest of the videos on our channel this one is going to be more of a, uh, an informative video uh, based around gaming PCs um, hopefully it will be like a new series we're doing where any sort of decent graphics card etc we'll talk about in depth but this video like I said is about gaming PCs and the reason why is because with Battlefield 4 literally around the corner, there hasn't been a better time to upgrade yourself to a gaming PC if that's what you want. It's no secret that uh, a high-end gaming PC is going to slightly tip the balance in graphics and power when it comes to next generation games. Uh, I know PS4 and the Xbox One are going to put up a decent fight, but in all fairness the PC will likely win in terms of visual prettiness. Um, I'm a console guy myself, so don't go um, starting a whole flame war in the comments section. I prefer sitting down and playing on console as much as the next person. But in all realism, uh, gaming PCs do offer better visual graphics than the consoles. So, first thing you need to know before you uh, want to get yourself a gaming PC. First basic rule is always smarter and cheaper to build your own PC. Um, my friend built one for his girlfriend uh, who's a gamer so lucky him I guess uh, he spent 900 pounds on it and he built the exact same one using the exact same specs on a website uh, it was Dell I'll name and shame him and it was over 2,000 pounds so he saved himself in the region of just under two grand um, well just over a grand sorry uh, that's a decent saving, so you already started saving money from there on out. Um, the more you spend, the bigger and more powerful the PC will be and the more future-proof it will be, i.e. it will last more years before you start needing to upgrade it. At first it can be quite daunting, I imagine, and uh, once you start looking into it, you, you realise you don't really know much about it or you're, you're a bit confused as to what does what. But the more you read about it, the more YouTube videos you watch on it, the more forums you start reading, you start getting understanding what does what um, and what piece is linked with this piece. For so example, if you upgrade the graphics card and everything else but leave the CPU as standard, you might start bottlenecking, which I'll talk more in detail about towards the end. You start to teach yourself more about it. Another little tip, well not tip, but another positive about building your own PC, if and when things do go wrong, as we know things do, uh, you're more sort of informed about as to what it could be and you can take a better guess at it. So you're limiting the price you might have to pay for repairs because you can simply just open up the case and you can see for yourself what could be the issue. So like I said, it's like a car. The minute you start tinkering away with your car, you start to learn more about it and the more comfortable you are uh, doing your own servicing almost. Another little tip would be set yourself a benchmark or a price bracket in where you don't go over and that keeps you within budget. If you just go there with a credit card you'll probably spend quite a lot of money. So keep yourself to a budget and that way you'll keep yourself in the remits of what you can afford. Uh, different people are going to want different things. For example uh, a hardcore gamer is going to want a a gaming con uh, system that can do a solid 60 frames per second and will have no trouble playing any high-end game that is out now and will be out in the next year or two. However, someone that does a lot of YouTube videos might want a console, uh, sorry, a system that can render videos pretty quickly uh, whilst multitasking and have a high amount of storage to keep them videos on. So, to get into the basics, we'll just go through the internal components, of, like the key things that um, modders and people that are upgrading their PCs will look into. So, the first thing we'll have is your motherboard. Now, if you're on a pretty low budget, you can overlook a motherboard, but a motherboard is the basic foundation. So, if you look at a motherboard as the foundations of a building, the better it is, the more weight you can put on it and the bigger you can make it. If you put quite crap foundations in it, it won't change the way anything is, per se, in the game, but you, it limits you on what you can put inside of it when it comes to CPUs, RAM, memory cards, etc. like this. But if you're on a low budget, you can skip a motherboard. However, if, the, if you want to spend decent money on it, it allows you to add better audio quality, a better 
components, better, pretty much anything that you can do to it. And it also allows you to have that option of overclocking it, which basically tinkers around with the factory settings to make it better. But when I say um, if you're on a low budget to skip this step, I don't mean leave the factory one in. I mean just don't go for a top end one. Just uh, don't worry about motherboard, i.e. get something that's mid-range and it will do the job just fine for what you want. Now moving on to CPUs, there's two big players in the market and we should all know that's AMD and Intel. But before you buy your CPU you need to tell, ask yourself what are you going to use your system for? Are you going to use it predominantly for gaming and only gaming? If so, then the AMD one was probably best for you. Uh, it's a little under PU for under $200 uh, dollars, that is. Um, or you can buy the Intel, the i5 or the i7. It's it's pretty good in great games, don't get me wrong. And it's also going to do more than just games. I, it's going to be faster at rendering. So you need to ask yourself what you're going to be doing. Uh, if it's only gaming, then we suggest going with the AMD. If you're going to do gaming as long as rend as well as rendering, then probably the Intel's the one for you. And now we're going to move on to the RAM. So. So there's a set amounts of RAM you can buy, 4GB, 8GB and 16GB. You can go up to 32 and you can even go up to 64, but we'll talk as to why you don't necessarily have to do that. A decent gaming rig will have about 4GB RAM. Uh, and this is basically the minimum. But to be on the safe side and to make your system uh, at least a little bit future proof, uh, we would suggest getting an 8GB RAM. And this will be ideal just for gaming. Now if you're going to start rendering videos as well, then a 16 gigabyte would be the option for you. And also the advantage of the 16 gigabyte RAM, you're making it again just that little bit more future proof. Um, you won't have to worry about the RAM for a few more years. Uh, the 32 gigs and 64s out there, they're really good and everything, but you're not going to see much more of an improvement because there's, like there's a margin of where the performance sort of caps and that's really it and if you start modding your PC people tend to overlook the power supply the more beefy components you put in there that are power hungry because they're they're better than your factory uh, components the more power your system's going to want now if you leave the factory uh, power supply in there it's to simply fail so power supply is another component you're going to need to upgrade if you're really going to make yourself a decent rig and even if you are on a budget I do recommend putting a little bit of money in the power supply because this is the lifeblood of your system. Uh, if your components aren't getting enough uh, power it will simply fail or possibly even damage them. So look for power supplies that are certified and give you the best ratings. You can do your own research because there's many 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 power supplies out there but just make sure you get yourself a decent one. Don't skimp on this part. A lot of websites out there that sell individual components for PCs will also give you the watt power that that component um, requires. I would say add it all up and add another 50 on extra watts um, on top of that to get that power supply just to be on the safe side and also to again to make your system future proof. So if you want to add another component you don't then have to add another power supply. Now we move on to the hard drives. So there's two hard drives out there now and these are your standard hard drives that you find in most PCs and now you've got the SSD ones which is like a giant flash card. Um, this is great to put your operating system on. Your system will boot ridiculously quicker than a system that's only using a hard drive. It will just race in front of it, a difference between maybe 20 to 30 seconds. You can go on YouTube and type in comparison videos of them and you'll just see the SSD wins all the time. The only disadvantage of it, one, it's more expensive and two, there's a lot less memory to offer on SSD. So if you're going to start rendering videos and you want somewhere to store them or you've got a lot of things to store, then you would use the hard drive. The SSD is mainly used for the operating system and those important applications that you want to load up quick for example uh, certain games if you play them over and over again or rendering software again if you're on a budget uh, I would say stick with just a regular hard drive you can get bigger memory and to be honest it does the job just fine uh, and if you haven't got anything to compare it to you don't know how much slower it is that's the, the overall realisticness of it all 
And now I move on to graphics cards. So these are the things that cost ridiculous amounts of money, right? Uh, well, if you're on a budget, you can find ones that are well within your remit. You just got to be able to budget yourself. Obviously, the more you spend, the better it is. And if you're a gamer, this is where you're going to want to pour a lot of your money into, at least, because the better the graphics card, the better the frame rates. The better the frame rates, the better the experience in playing that game. And the two main uh, guys out there is AMD and NVIDIA. And both have their diehard fans, and both will tell you AMD is better, NVIDIA is better. So you're going to have to make your own opinion on that. But both are going to increase your overall performance in games and allow you to yourself to be better. If you play on a choppy game that's really laggy, you're not going to play to the best of your abilities because if someone gives you crap, you can only turn out crap. If someone gives you the best it can be, then it's down to you to be the best you can be. And now it comes to the cooling aspect of things. Like I said, all these components are going to be designed for gaming or high-end PCs for rendering. So they are going to be power hungry and they are going to need cooling. So whether you have a mini tower, a mid tower or a full tower, you need really good airflow. Uh, if the hot air is allowed to stay inside the system, uh, it will allow the uh, components to fail, overheat them, possibly even damage them. It's especially true for your CPU that definitely needs cooling. Uh, that is the brain of your system and that is telling everything to do its job and that's what needs to kept, be kept cool along with everything else. So good airflow in there to take that hot air out of there. Um, if you're going to do slight overclocking then you're going to need decent air coolers, uh, decent uh, fans. You can now get cases with fans in there just to suck the air, hot air out of there. If you're going to really heavily overclock components including your CPU then a water cooler is going to be the best. Um, it is quite expensive normally but and also you've got the added um, risk of putting water in electrical components but if you are capable of doing so then obviously that would be the recommended option because nothing's going to keep it cooler than water and that's really the key components in a PC um, the only thing is some people will start customizing it and start adding bits and leaving other bits as standard uh, the different the risks of that is to find a good balance between all your components if you have something that's top end and then on the other side of your, it you have something that's really low end um, not, neither is going to work to its best capability and that is normally true of what a lot of people do is they will buy they'll, you know they'll spend hundreds if not a couple of thousands on a graphics card okay maybe not a couple of thousands but they'll spend hundreds on a graphics card and leave the CPU as standard like the processor um, now your graphics card can only do so much <laughs> so just it's called bottlenecking and the reason is because your graphics card is trying to put all that information in and your CPU can only take a certain amount so it creates a log, it creates like a, this, this back queue and that just eventually just slows down your system so you, you're only going to be using you know 20 to 30 percent of your graphics card for example and your processor is going to be struggling anyway so you're not doing anything any good and again, like I mentioned with the power supply, some people will build the high-end PC and just leave the power supply as standard. And then what will happen is your poor PC is gasping for air and you are just constantly feeding it um, hot air and not allowing it to breathe as much. It will just suffocate and die. Now guys, this is mainly for people that you know are thinking about PC upgrades and just wanted to clear understanding of what each component kind of did. We're going to be doing more in-depth stuff with this with this type of thing. Um, obviously if you're already into upgrading your PC then you know all this, all, all this stuff and you know the basics and good luck to you and if you want to send us a picture of your PC go for it. But for everyone else that was thinking about it, I hope this helped. I um, hope you enjoyed the video. Give us a like and a subscribe because it really helps a lot and uh, see you in the next gaming videos. Bye bye!